Hey, you guys. So I wanted to give a quick word of encouragement. So one thing I love about the Bible is that um, it's always bringing new life, right? Amen. You can read the same things over and over or years later and get something completely new out of it because it is a it is God's word. It never outdates and there's always new revelation, new wisdom, um, new nuggets to glean from it. So I was just finishing up the book of Proverbs and I'm reading Proverbs 31. And I'm sure if you're familiar with Proverbs 31, and if you're not, that's okay. But Proverbs 31 is a classic book about the virtuous woman, you know, the virtuous wife. And that's what most people think of if they hear Proverbs 31. And um, if you are a God-fearing woman, if you know Jesus and love Jesus, you would aspire to be a, a virtuous woman, and that's honorable. But the beginning of the book, um, is, I want to just share some background and some context uh, about it. So it's my, the sub -chap, subtitle heading in mine is says the words of King Lemuel's mother. Well, do you know who King Lemuel, first of all, King Lemuel is King Solomon. The book of Proverbs is written by Solomon, King Solomon, one of the most famous uh, kings of all time. He was the man of the greatest wisdom and his father was David, King David. And while King David uh, went down in history as one of the best kings to ever rule on the earth, amen, um, he ha also had a pretty tainted past and he fell. And so he fell to adultery with Bathsheba. So he and Bathsheba, um, they had an affair essentially and um, she got pregnant and she uh, they lost their first baby, I guess, to sum it up. And um, so you can imagine what that might have been like. And they had her husband killed. So David had Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, killed um, to cover up their sin. But then she ended up pregnant. They lost their first baby. Well, they had another baby, and that's who Solomon is. So Solomon's mother is Bathsheba. So you can imagine the shame and the guilt and the grief and all the things that they went through um, years prior in life before Solomon was of age and becoming the next king. And so in the book of Proverbs, uh, Solomon gets a lot of wisdom from his dad, from King David. But then in Proverbs 31, he's getting um, wisdom from his mom. She's lived a lot of life. She's also a very wise woman. And um, I think it would be fair to say that she too had a lot of wisdom to share. She was a leader. Here she was married to King David, so she's the queen. And um, it says, let me just read it to you. The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. What, my son, and what son of my womb, and what son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, Solomon. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. And that's verses one through nine before you get into the virtuous wife, which is chapter, or sorry, verses uh, 10 through 31, the remainder of Proverbs 31 that most people are familiar with or could uh, recall. But isn't it interesting that of all the advice that Queen Bathsheba finds necessary to give to Solomon, and I'm sure there's more that's not necessarily documented, right, in the canonization of scripture. But what went down for all of history for us to read? She finds the most important things to tell him that could take him down as a leader, as a king, someone who's been put in charge of God's people and just the people of the land in general are, number one, not to give your strength to women. So do not have wandering eyes have strong boundaries um you know don't be sleeping around don't be uh flirting um 
it, it's dangerous. And look what it did to David. You know, he let his eyes wander and he lusted over Bathsheba. He was a king. She <laughs> bowed down, gave him his way, and um, they really suffered consequences for it. Now, God works all things together for good, and he was uh, merciful and did great things with David still. And I have, um, you know, kind of a testimony like that. Not that I was a king or anything, but um, God has been very merciful and given me what I didn't deserve and allowed me to um, just have a platform to um, influence people and help people get their life back when I was such a wretch and such a mess and used to give myself away and party like it was my uh, full-time job and um, I was just I was I was a liar and a cheater and a just a mess you know um, until Jesus and I have never been the same in 17 years now still following my king um, but next word of advice was um, let's see here um, so don't give your strength to women nor your ways to that which destroys kings so be very very aware of the things that will take you down that will destroy you so i like when i read this what jumped off the page to me is this is what a, oh, this is wisdom for leaders for a wise leader so listen up if you're a parent <laughs> if you have children you're a leader um i would be i'm a mother of two daughters so i i can i think this would apply to me i know i'm not a king i know i'm really nobody um but i'm uh, also put in charge of God's people in the position that he's given me just as a doctor um, to people come to me for counsel. They come to me for help. They're putting their trust in me. And I actually earnestly fear the Lord in a healthy way. I know that I have to answer to him and I take that um, honor and that responsibility and that privilege and this uh, job, career, ministry, whatever you want to call it. I take it very seriously. And um, something the Lord spoke to me many years ago was I've called you to be a leader and not a misleader. If you have a social media platform, you are putting yourself in the public eye and you're a leader of some sort. You're influencing someone. If you're a parent, you're influencing someone. Even if you're not a parent and don't have kids, I am sure that God is using you in some way and that you influence someone and that you are a leader even if in a small capacity. But Bathsheba knew that the other, one of the most uh, uh, prevalent things that could take a king down, it is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for King Solomon to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. Why? Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. That speaks volumes to me. Um, this is, I feel like, kind of the message God's put on my heart for a really long time. Um, I'm considered legalistic for it a lot of times um but i believe that when you walk in wisdom a lot of people will roll their eyes at you and they they just won't want to hear it because it doesn't feel good to the flesh it's countercultural. um you could find other scriptures you could cherry pick scriptures and very much justify <clears throat> wanting to partake in drinking and things like that and i don't think that it's a sin if you want to have a drink every once in a while but there are definitely verses that make it very clear about habitual drinking um or where is the line what is what does make it intoxicating where do you lose your judgment i don't know the civil law you know the world who we don't trust uh, knows that even after one you're considered legally uh, drunk and you're crossing a legal line you shouldn't get in a car and drive so i would say your judgment is skewed there but um i think this is this was just i wasn't looking for this <laughs> i was excited to read proverbs 31 and um honestly you have my heart sifted to be a better wife and just finish the book of Proverbs and glean wisdom. I ask, I can earnestly say that I ask the Lord in my prayers for wisdom almost every day of my life because I know I need it. And I know that without godly wisdom, I'm just really, things aren't going to go well. I know that I can't help my patience without the Lord giving me wisdom because sometimes he gives wisdom, solutions, ideas, um, a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge, which are gifts of the spirit that we can ask for every single day. And God will um, deliver as he sees fit and when he sees fit. But I see him faithfully give wisdom and knowledge all the time that goes far beyond what lab results show or what I would know from my training or education or clinical or personal experience. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm humbled by that. And um, I'm also humbled by God's word. And I think that this is a word for leaders to consider. Um, I 
uh, I know that as a person who has been called to this a long time ago, um, delivered from this, and yes, I did abuse it, so I have a different past maybe than some, but um, <clears throat> that when I go places as a believer and other believers or leaders, pastors, um, even mothers, fathers, whatever, um, you know, they're drinking like it just doesn't matter and this is their hab a habitual way of life for them. Um, I'm greatly stumbled by it. I don't trust them. My guard is up. I live that life. It sure looks just like the life that I walked away from in 2013. <clears throat> um, I see the judgment skewed. I see the tone change. I see other sin starting to trickle in. Um, and so it is just very, um, it's discouraging and, and um, it does stumble other people. And there's so many people that have struggled with this. And so I think Bathsheba, she actually had great wisdom and she wasn't afraid to say it to her son because when you are put on a pedestal of any sort, um, you you will be offered many things You will, and you will be expected to be uh, relevant and cool and celebrate because you can or because you, you know, you've got it, you've got the money, you've got the success, you've got the platform or whatever. And um, really there's no choice in it other than a fleshly decision. It, it's not like you're fueling the spirit by... By doing this, you're putting yourself at risk. You're potentially forgetting the law and perverting justice. Um, fill in the blank. So I don't know. That might be a word for someone. I might be judged for it, but I'm okay with that. I'm just reading God's word and what he spoke to me. So I, I pray that this blesses someone today. Um, anyway, God bless you guys. Um, Lord, I pray that your word um, goes forth. It, it does, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts to the division of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. And I pray that it would do that, Lord. It is our offensive and defensive weapon. I pray that it would comfort in some way. Um, but anyway, the truth stands and we're so grateful, Lord, that this is our this is our moral compass. This is um, this is the word we stand on. This is this is the hill we die on um, at the end of the day, Lord. So thank you for the sacrifice you made for us. Thank you for dying for us and give us um, humble, obedient hearts to obey your word and read it entirely in context and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.